Hello and welcome to Mead Week on Brian Span. On this edition, Fort Meade celebrates Earth Day 2013 and the Department of the Army hosts listening sessions. These stories and more, but first on Thursday, Fort Meade held its annual Earth Day celebration. This year's event was covered by Fox 45 Morning News. Colonel Ed Rothstein with us this morning. How you doing? Good morning. This is, thank you for being here. Yeah, it's normal time for you, right? It's pretty normal time. We <laughs> do a little bit of exercise, but it's a great way to kick off today. It is, and it's an Earth Day here at, at Fort Meade. You guys have done this in the past, and the big thing, I guess, for, for most people is actually getting on site here. It is. It's, it's really all about a concept called Team Me, and that's about the community, bringing folks from outside the fence line in our community onto the installation. What are they most surprised with usually when they come out here, finally uh, see it on campus for the first time? Just how dynamic Fort Meade is, and all the opportunities that Fort Meade um, has for our community, from a museum to a library to a special day like today with Earth Day. Every year, the Earth Day celebration features different attractions. This year, we highlight displays from the Public Health Command, one of Fort Meade's more than 100 tenant units. Look out. We have a military entomologist here with us right now. So uh, I don't know if these are super bugs that can go into battle with everybody else, but uh, they are pretty cool to look at. And we have Captain Roseanne Radovich with us right now. You're the expert at this. What's in your hand? Well, what we have here is actually a Madagascar hissing cockroach. They're a tropical cockroach from the island of Madagascar, so you won't find these in your, ha your house at home. And then what's the uh, other friend here crawling up your wrist? <laughs> this other friend here, let me move it, is a giant tropical millipede. And of course, it's a baby, so it's not nearly as giant as I'd like it to be. But <laughs> this is also a vegetarian, and once he warms up and stops being shy, he'll wander around my hand. And his favorite thing is actually squash and zucchini. So it's always fun keeping fruits and veggies in the lab and, for And you just got to keep on trying things to know what it likes. The Public Health Command also set up a demonstration for measuring noise pollution. We are showing the children what exactly noise exposures are. Okay, and so you have a number here. What's a good number? What's a bad number? What we're looking at right now is typically around 78, 79 right now. The bad number and the magic number is 85. So over 85 means you're doing some damage to your ears long Correct. term. Okay, so let's go over to the car. So, and you know, a lot of people like to do that kind of thing, so come on over. So we have a lot of people that really love loud music. So we're gonna find out how loud her music alley is. We're not even in the car and it was hitting 85 there. Let's get a little bit closer and see what happens. All right, 89 and up, and that's not even inside. You wanna go inside? More than 500 kids from Post and local schools were also on hand. Earth Day has been celebrated worldwide since 1970. In Army news, the Budget Control Act of 2011 mandated that the Army reduce its force by as many as 80,000 soldiers by 2017. The Department of the Army recently sent out a team to brief about 30 installations across the country about the reductions. At the Fort Meade brief on Thursday, Military District of Washington Commander Major General Michael Lennington pointed out that these reductions are not related to the current sequester issue. As most folks in this room know, the, uh, the Budget Control Act of 2011 has reduced the Army end strength from 500 and almost 70,000 troops to 490,000 uh, between uh, 2010 and uh, 2017. Basically, the Army is looking to cut eight combat brigade teams. Colonel Tom O'Donohue, who was at Fort Polk earlier this week, says the Department of the Army did look overseas first. From 2001 to 2017, the size of the Army in Germany will be reduced by 50 percent. Um, and in, in Korea, from 2006 uh, to present, uh, we reduced uh, about approximately 10,000 troops. So I just want to be clear and upfront that, hey, you know, the Army is reducing uh, its footprint overseas before it starts looking here stateside. He went on to explain how the process is going to work. We look at, you know, strategic considerations, costs, you know, the need for military construction, all kinds of stuff like that. All those factors will be weighed. Then there'll be a series of meetings, general officer level meetings, you know, one star, two star steering committees that will evaluate different scenarios based on all this consideration. And from that, we will make uh, recommendations to Army senior leaders, chief of staff, secretary of the Army. And then ultimately, they will decide where the Army is going to cut its brigade combat teams. The final portion of the briefing featured input and questions from the community. The general consensus among those in attendance was a feeling that despite Fort Meade's ever spiraling growth, cutting the garrison's budget is not the way to go. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Meade Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week.